Fantasy Ed with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. All right, everybody. Uh, hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge presented by Fantasy Six Pack. My name is Jonathan Chen, and as always, I will be joined by Richard Seville and Kevin Wu. Uh, big week in the uh, NFL, not in terms of waiver wire, but just in terms of news. Uh, more Eagles injured, uh, big signing for the Chiefs, and the Titans remain undefeated. Uh, so I'll bring you guys in. Richard, how's it going this week? Very good. Uh, very good uh, week. All right. And uh, Kevin. This is this is your time. Uh, I feel like you should host it this week because Gus Edwards is now finally the RB one in Baltimore. Ooh. I mean, is he? I mean, <laughs> is it not J.K. Dobbins? <laughs> I mean, this is like I, this is like honestly like all my friends because they know I'm a Ravens fan have been asking me like, oh, who's so is it Edwards or Dobbins? And honestly, I have no clue. Like, we'll probably get into it, but after Ingram went out, they played literally like basically the same amount of snaps, basically the same amount of routes ran. Um, the only thing was Edwards got the two red zone touches, which ended up in him scoring a touchdown. So I, I honestly have no <laughs> clue what going forward, which one I would say uh, that both of them have looked good when they've been on the field. Uh, Dobbins probably looks a little more explosive, but Edwards is just uh, between the tackles, just a very steady runner. I think over the past two years, he's been. He never disappoints. He doesn't disappoint you. He never does. I've never seen Edwards like whenever he handles the ball. He- he looks confident. Every time he has the ball, it looks like he's going to gain something. Yeah, I mean, he's good. Like, he's a good <laughs> back. I uh, just, it's not much else I can really say about that. Like, he's has a history of being good. Like, his yards per carry the last two years has been like something like 5.7. I think when he was a starter for like the bot, like the last half of 2018, he was averaging like 85 yards a game. So he's like a good back. There's like no doubt about that. The only question is like if they split 50-50, then both of them become like almost unusable. Yeah, it's oh, committee the, backfield. That's the problem. The Gus bus is a steady ride. Uh, let's get on to the news this week. Uh, I guess top of the list here. Antonio Brown is eligible to return and practice in two weeks, uh, grant, provided he gets signed. Uh, is there any use in fantasy managers picking him up uh, now in anticipation of a possible signing? Kevin? I mean, if you're in a super deep league or if you're like desperate or if you are like already like five and oh, and you just might as well want the highest upside. Oh, somebody just fumbled. Zeke just fumbled. Again? Again. Oof. Oh, he fumbled once already? Yeah. <laughs> boy, oh boy. On the yeah, one? That is, his, that is his nose ring. He fumbled on the one? Which one? No. The, the Dallas one or the Cardinals one? No, he didn't fumble on the one. No, he fumbled at like the twenty. Yeah, oh, like, fumbled. Uh, yeah, yeah, listeners, in case you're wondering, we are recording this on uh, Monday night during the yeah. Cardinals and Cowboys. <laughs> I apologize about that. That was little... can't help but react to the, the Zeke fumble. Um, Antonio Brown. What? Antonio Brown. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're desperate, I mean, I'm sure some team is going to give him a look. The only question is if they're actually going to pick him up. Like, uh, I mean, if you look around the league, is there any team that really needs a receiver like that? I can't really think of one. The Ravens. Yeah, you know, I mean, the Jets don't count. I mean. <laughs> Do you want any shares of Antonio Brown on the Jets? I mean, you would want him to go to a good team. Like, I don't think like him signing with a bad team particularly worth. The Raiders. The Raiders are fine. Rugs is nasty. Good well, lord. He, I mean, that's he can't go back to the Raiders. Yeah, he can't go back to the Raiders. He can't go back to the Raiders. He would actually just get buried in the Vegas desert and never be seen again. <laughs> No, well, they were talking about Le'Veon Bell going back to the Steelers, so, you know. I mean, but it's a different situation. He, Le'Veon didn't, like... Well, yeah, I know. It was... It was he, they're completely different, but... Well, it wasn't It, it wasn't exactly... Antonio Brown of the Chiefs. Forget it. Antonio Brown of the Chiefs. Everyone no. Of the Chiefs. Let's go. No, I wouldn't. He'd, he'd have to go somewhere like, I don't know, Dolphins or something. No, Chiefs. He can sign for the, the Chiefs. For the where's he gonna? What's like, he? What's he gonna? Where, where's he gonna? Was he gonna be the fourth wide receiver on the Chiefs? He wouldn't settle for that. He is automatically one wide receiver one B automatically. Yeah, I mean, the last time we saw Antonio Brown play football, did he have like eight catches for like a hundred yards or something on the Patriots? Uh, it was like four catches for sixty yards and a touchdown. But yeah, it was his first game with zero practices with the team, so he just showed up and did his thing. Yeah, I, I do. Mean, the I, dude is I do know what. good at football. Yes. There is one team he's definitely not going. He doesn't like Nick Foles, and so he's not going to the Bears. He will not sign with the Bears, he says. I mean, what? sure. Well, I, I, I think it was on. I'll tell you, I, I don't think he'll come to the Ravens because I think if we cut Earl you know, Thomas for a contract detrimental to the team, I don't think you can bring in Antonio Brown. Yeah. yeah. The, the guy from well, Barstool Sports was trying to get him uh, uh, to uh, – he was trying to entice him to the Bears. but Oh, Antonio and he said he doesn't like Nick Foles? Yeah. Yeah, dude, I don't think Antonio, if you're listening, which I'm sure you are, I don't think you have a choice, buddy. <laughs> if they want you, you should probably just sign with them. 
Yeah, uh, Antonio, you should come on the show. Yeah, I we want Antonio Brown on the show. Oh no, it was like Josh that. Gordon. Oh, well, I don't know. Are you guys like any of these nerd wills to come on the show? Josh Gordon isn't like insane though. He's no. actually like a very eloquent speaker. Antonio Brown might actually just come on, call us dumb, and then leave, which would be pretty funny. <laughs> I'd like that. It. I'd take it. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, Rams backfield. Um, Cam Akers came back. He played, but he had zero snaps in the first half and one in the second half, while Daryl Henderson and Malcolm Brown had an almost 50-50 split. Uh, Henderson had 32 snaps. Malcolm Brown had 27. I guess, <clears throat> Richard, where do you see this backfield going um, when Akers is fully healthy? I do. Uh, I think this uh, thing is just they're just uh, working uh, Cam Akers in. He'll be back up. It's still a muddly committee. I I don't like owning any of them. I don't even like owning Daryl Henderson, even though he looks the most effective with the ball. You can't trust him because down at the goal line, they could suddenly put in Malcolm Brown, and then and then you get vultured the points. Um, it's it's an awful backfield. It's like it's almost like San Francisco in that way. You really can't trust anybody. So I don't know. I the I I do think that Cam Akers. I think his uh, his uh, snap count will go up as uh, maybe even as early as as next week. Are they off next week? No, no, no. They're no, off. they're not. They have. Um, who do they have next week? They're not. They, it's not a bye next week though. The Rams are playing. The Rams are playing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, it could be even as early as next week. So I would and, say. And Kevin, knowing like or hearing that. Daryl Henderson's been very good uh, of of late over the past few weeks. Where do you rank him now if Akers gets more snaps? Uh, I kind of just keep him the same. I mean, <clears throat> with the Rams backfield, like you know they're going to rotate guys, so you can't ever really count on Daryl Henderson as more of like a flex play. Like if he's your RB two, I guess you'll be okay with it. But I mean, oh, never Kenyon really. Drake touchdown. There it is, boys. Kenyon right, Drake. We're back. All right, we're God. back in action. <laughs> Another um, goal line touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think he has like five carries for he's, nine he's yards just and a touchdown. Just staying That's alive. He's just I'm barely hanging on. <laughs> yeah, I'm counting you. It. it doesn't really matter how he gets the points. Like, you get the points. That's all yeah, exactly. Sorry, Kevin. Um, yeah, Daryl Henderson, I think, I mean, you just play him if he's if he's going to be the starter. Like, yeah, Cam Akers is going to take some touches, but there's a lot of backs. I, I think the Rams run the ball enough that Cam Akers can get, you know, 10 touches a game and Henderson can still be worth starting. Yeah, and I guess at the at the end of that, does Malcolm Brown factor into this? Is anything more than like a flex, uh, like a desperation play? Yeah, if you're playing Malcolm Brown, you probably already lost your week. That hurts. He's on my bench. That that, that no, really that's what I'm it. saying. He needs I'm to be on your bench. Him. He's only useful on your bench. He's <laughs> like, if you're playing him as a starter, dude, like I don't know, make a trade or something. Yeah, he's a stash and hope. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, well, Richard, you mentioned San Francisco earlier and the lack of trust there with that backfield. Um, Raheem Mostert was getting most of the touches before he suffered another injury uh, this past week. High ankle sprain. He's back on the IR. So Jarek McKinnon uh, is again the lead guy. Jeff Wilson was out of week six with a calf injury. Uh, so he may or may not be back next week. Uh, news hasn't come out yet. But what are you doing with the guys behind McKinnon? So, well, yeah, Wilson and Jamichael Hasty. What are you doing with those two? Uh, yeah, I know. My, uh, I know uh, Jamichael Hasty did very well, but I think with Raheem Mostert, it's clear that Raheem Mostert, when he's in, he's the quote unquote, he's the Daryl Henderson, so to speak, of the of the backfield. A little bit more, so I think there's a little edge for Raheem Moster, but I think it, I think it switches back to McKinnon now. He gets the, a little bit ahead. Of, I know uh, Hasty did really good uh, with his uh, with the carries he got. And he, he looked he looked very sharp, and I think he's um, he's he's a waiver wire uh, pickup this week. And I think you have to pick him up, but I I do think the uh, I do think the touches lean in favor of McKinnon as. Uh, but you're playing a no better as a flex, so kind of in the same sense as Daryl Henderson. Uh, Kevin, Jeff, if Jeff Wilson Jr. does play, what are you doing with his backfield? Um, I think you're still going McKinnon. I think uh, just the upside there. He's the pass catcher. Jeff Wilson there last game out really was a disappointment. Um, so I think the only safe one there is McKinnon. Yeah, I get Hasty was kind of in there, but um, I don't know. I don't think uh, – I would say Hasty is more like a – He's like a wild card. Like there's a chance. I know a lot of people in like deep dynasty leagues love him because he's like an athletic talent. But I think Jared McKinnon has kind of proven himself there. And uh, I think if Mostert is going to go on IR for three weeks, like this is the time for him to really grab the reins of this offense, which he kind of was doing until Mostert came back. 
We yeah. like we always like to look at upside in rookies, and I think that's one thing that Hasty has. Hasty has rookie appeal, and we we always like that with with running backs, don't we? Well, the the appeal should have been with the the rookie wide receivers this year. They are going nuts, every single one of them, especially T. Higgins. That guy's doing very well. Yes. Um. Well, I guess more injuries with NFC backfields, uh, or just an entire offense at this point. Miles Sanders and Zach Ertz both scheduled to miss, uh, miss significant time, or in Ertz's case anyway, Sanders is going to miss at least one week, uh, this Thursday. Um, the Eagles are down to two starters, uh, like two original starters from, from week one, which is Carson Wentz and Jason Peters. Um, everybody else has been hurt. There's no Deshaun Jackson, no Ashawn Jeffrey, no Jalen Rager, no Zach Ertz, no Dallas Goddard. Now, no Miles Sanders. And what do you do with this team? Do you trust Travis Fulgham? Do you now have to trust Boston Scott? Uh, Richard, what are you doing with, with the Eagles here? Yeah, first of all, I want to talk about Miles Sanders and the the strange scoring for this play is that uh, Miles Sanders gets the yardage. Now, um, Scott Hansen said at the time that um, basically it's counted as not, there is no rush. He doesn't get rush yardage on the stat sheet. And I think that was wrong because it turns out he does get the, he does get the rush yardage and then he fumbles and then his own team weight recovers in the end zone. Now, this was actually the play where he got hurt. And uh, so I'm I'm not sure about how that how that works out, but Scott Hansen had it wrong, and I was thinking, well, you don't get the points, you should get the points, and then it turns out that you do get the points, and Scott Hansen was wrong on NFL Road Zone. Anyway, back to your question about what we're doing with this backfield and the offense in general. I have to say that yes, you're going with Corey Clement, Boston Scott, Boston Scott. Obviously, will get the uh, will get the main uh, bell cow type of uh, yard uh, start. Um, and then you'll have Corey Clement catching out of the backfield. They'll probably work in a wide receiver to do some uh, to do some backfield work. Uh, I'm not sure who that would probably be. I would probably think it might be Arkega Whiteside that might be doing a little bit of uh, backfield work. So look for him to uh, mix in there. So I think that's that's probably what they'll do. So uh, as for as for tight end. Uh, yeah, we got this new guy called Kroom, and it came out of nowhere. He might be uh, in line for uh, some targets, so uh, look for him. You're not picking him up. Don't pick up Kroom. But uh, Kroom, Kroom, yeah. I have an Eagles fan, a good friend who's an Eagles fan, and right after Kroom caught that touchdown, I said, "Who is this dude?" He said, "I actually have no clue." <laughs> He's just yeah. some guy. <laughs> He's just some guy, but he might be. He may be in there now because Ertz is out. So I don't know, but. Uh, but there is the who's the other guy, Kevin, to just pass on the question over to you for your view. Yeah, Kevin. Um, Travis Fulgham has a touchdown now in all of his games. Um, all three he's played this year. He's the only person that Carson Wentz can throw to now. Um, is that I guess good in the sense he's going to get more targets. Bad in the sense that defenses literally only have to bother guarding him. Yeah, I mean he's surprisingly good. Like. Um... I think putting up those numbers against the Ravens is not, it's not easy. I mean, Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey out there are, are pretty good corners. Um, so yeah, he is the only one out there, but uh, I don't think, I don't really think defensive coordinators are going into the week like, oh my God, we have to stop Travis Fulgham. So I think uh, he's not, he's not going to get double teamed or anything like that. So <laughs> I think you're perfectly fine starting him. I mean, as like a wide receiver three or something like that. Like he just, I don't know, at a certain point, the, um, like you just, if he's going to get 10 targets a game, like, yeah, then he's playable. I think, yeah. Um, like well, somebody's said, coming get... back, isn't he? Somebody's, I mean, Jeffrey and Jackson, one of them has to be coming back. I mean, week. between the two of them, I think they have half a hamstring. So <laughs> I wouldn't bother playing either of them their first week back, especially since Jackson was yeah. like immediately ruled out last week. So, yeah. yeah. And Jeffrey, like Jeffrey, even last year, he looked, he looked toast. Yeah. I, no, especially hamstring stuff that takes some time, especially with Jeffrey. He's been out for so long. That's this is Fulgham and against the Giants on Thursday. Sure, so I would trust him. But then after that, uh, no, see if you can sell high for. Well, no, it was a Dallas game, then a buy. Damn, Eagles got an easy schedule now after their after the the last three they went through with Baltimore, Pittsburgh, and San Francisco. Yeah, you have wish to start them against Dallas. Yeah, so oh my God, this is horrible. What a schedule for for the Eagles coming up. Giants, Cowboys, Giant a bye. Giants again, then the Browns, then the Seahawks. Good lord. If you have Travis Fulgham, don't sell until after that Browns game or the Seahawks game. Lord. Yeah, All I don't right. know how the Eagles are even functioning as an offense. I saw a death chart tweeted out and I think out of their 
11 starters and like 11 backups. I want to say they were that's 22. I think they were missing 18 of them like due to injury after this week. Wow. <laughs> that's like the only insane. starters left are or the only players left are Wentz, Boston Scott, uh I think their center, Jason Peters, right? Did he I, retire? Jason Peters still there? I don't even know. Yeah, I, it's not much. It's definitely none of the skill players. Yeah, it's it's a lineman. Mm-hmm. I just want to confirm. No, sorry, Jason Kelsey. Excuse me, Jason, Jason Kelsey. Kelsey. Yeah, the center. Yeah, uh, uh, Goddard, uh, rough over there. Is Goddard coming back at some point too? Is he's he's just on not short... soon. He he's he's eligible to come off IR uh, this week, uh, same as Jalen Rager. But Rager still out for another at least three weeks because uh, he had a fracture in his thumb, and then Ert, uh, not Ertz, uh, Goddard was a fractured ankle, so he's oh, not going to yeah, be back this week right. either. Yeah, yeah they yeah, won't be go. back this week. It's the full gum show now. Yeah, it wasn't a sprain. Yeah, that's right. Uh, all right. Well, other ankle injury news. Uh, Christian McCaffrey. Um, Matt Rule said he's not sure if CMC is going to be back this week or next week or the week after. So there's a chance that, uh, you know, the RB1 is not going to be back until week nine or after week nine. Um, if you're in a redraft league and you're iffy on your playoff chances, uh, maybe you're 500, you're just like you're three and three now, something like that. Richard, what are you doing with McCaffrey? Well, first of all, you're you're hanging on t- uh, to to Davis. You got to hang on to Davis. If uh, don't try and trade away Davis now, because uh, a lot of I, I know that a lot of advisories are saying try and sell uh, Davis. Don't sell Davis now until you get a confirmation on on when Christian McCaffrey returns. Because if you do, you're going to be without a a pretty good uh, backup running back. And not only that. Uh, I'm not sure what if if Mike Davis might have earned himself a um, a portion of uh, McCaffrey's uh, touches because they're going to be careful with McCaffrey. They're not going to give him. I don't think. I don't think we're going to see full workloads for Christian McCaffrey this season, even when he does come back. Because I think they're going to be careful with him until he's really fully, uh, uh, you know, ready to take on full workloads. I mean, if he says that he is, you know, players always say we're ready to take on full workload. But the confidence the Panthers have in Mike Davis. If you own Mike Davis and you and you're the Christian McCaffrey, uh, you know, you've been holding him in IR or whatever. You got to hold on tight. Do not, do not, do not, do not trade uh, Mike Davis. Do not make, uh, unless the offer is just, you know, that you can't refuse it. Um, Yeah, hang on to Mike Davis right until the end, until you're absolutely certain that Christian Winscaffey is coming back. And even so, think twice about it, even then. Kevin, if you have CMC and you don't have Mike Davis um, and, you know, you're on the playoff bubble, do you look to trade him in hopes that, you know, uh, you can push for a playoffs, or do you hope that you can kind of skate through and then use him to to boost you moving in? Considering that the Panthers themselves are three and three, and still get to face the Falcons and Lions and Vikings and Broncos in their hopes for a playoff spot. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to do the due diligence and at least see what you might be able to get for him in a trade. But like, you've got to the price still has to be steep. Like, yeah. you can't just trade him for like an RB. Like an RB two and a wide receiver two or something like that. You've got to get good value back if you're going to trade him. Um, because yeah, while Mike Davis is good, like Christian McCaffrey, uh, in two games had like he had 250 all-purpose yards and four touchdowns. So um, he's gonna be good when he comes back. I don't think. Yeah, I get Mike Davis is great and all, but I I can't even really imagine that they're just gonna like make that anything less than like a 70-30 split. In which case, I think McCaffrey in this offense, like I guess the way I would put it is if Mike Davis is doing this in this offense with Matt Rule, like just think about what Christian McCaffrey is going to do. This is true, but yeah. there's also there's also the, uh, you know, setbacks happen, right? So you want to you want to keep that insurance. Uh, Not with a high ankle sprain. Once a sprain is healed, then it's fine. It's not like a soft tissue injury or anything like that. It's not like mm-hmm. a hamstring once the ankle is stabilized and like the the ligament is healed, he he'll be fine. It's not really a re-injury thing unless he plays hurt. Yes. Yeah, and I don't think they have any reason to bring him back playing hurt. Yeah. So once he's back, it'll be he'll be back. He's not Mike Thomas trying to come up with excuses for why he got suspended. Mm. Um. All right. Last piece of news before we move on. There's a lot of new stuff we just did. Uh. Oh. It's been a while since Le'Veon Bell got signed, relatively in you know news cycle <laughs> terms. Uh. Clyde Edwards Elaire had a, a a very nice game today. Averaged over six yards a carry. Uh, got over twenty five carries. What is Le'Veon Bell's role going to be uh, with Kansas City here, Richard? What are you thinking? Well, Reed says uh, he doesn't want Bell to take the plays of my little guy. That's 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 his word. So 
I, I don't think Bell just comes in and just takes over. I think uh, I think we could be looking at a committee approach. Like any like any running back that comes in, you kind of got to earn your stripe. And uh, just because Bell has name value and uh, you know a history of great um, uh, outings with the with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it's just a big star. Um, I think Le'Veon Bell has a great chance to uh, return to prominence. But this is this does belong to Clyde Edwards Hilaire, and Hilaire showed today why he deserves uh, you know to be the uh, running back of the. Uh, Chiefs and the the main carrier and uh, if Le'Veon Bell takes it over uh, you know Le'Veon Bell is actually more like insurance if anything happens because who have they got they've got uh, Daryl Williams and uh, and uh, Darwin Thompson the guy who should be worried is the guy who uh, opted out what's going to happen to Damian Williams now what will happen to him? That's a big question. The Chief, I think the Chiefs moves on with him, actually. So I think I think it's the end of the Damian Williams time in uh, in Kansas City. I think it was a bad move for him to opt out. All right, and Kevin, I guess in terms of Le'Veon's role, obviously he was the guy in well, as much as you could be the guy in with the Jets. Is there any I guess credence to the thought that? Bell is going to play more of a hybrid role and split out wide uh, as Sammy Watkins, like half replacement uh, as he's done before. That, that'd be interesting. I mean, Bell is an advanced route runner. Um, even in Pittsburgh, he was like running routes, like legitimately out of the slot. But I, I don't know if he has that kind of juice left. I don't watch Jets games because I value my life. Um, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. I feel like the one thing, if if anything, he's coming in to kind of compliment CEH. Um, I don't believe that he's coming in to make it a 50-50 backfield or anything like that. Um, so for me, I kind of think what Le'Veon excels now is probably in the passing game. I feel like he is still going to be a good screen catcher. He's gonna They're going to be able to line him up in the backfield and split him out wide, kind of mess with defenses like that. He's going to be a little bit of a chess piece. But... Um, I don't know. I guess this is the ultimate test for like the Adam Gase theory. Like, does everyone just get away from Adam Gase and become amazing again, like Ryan Tannehill, or is Bell just going to be a guy? Because he's not—he's not as old as you think. I think he's only twenty-eight. Yep. Um, yeah, he's not old. Yeah, and well, I, in I've running seen, back years, that's a little old. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've seen people say like, okay, well, last year they brought in Lashawn McCoy and he didn't do anything, but. I guess Bell is probably better than McCoy, but then again, CEH is probably better than Damian Williams. So uh, it's hard to say. I would try to sell hell high on Bell because I'm, I, I guess if I had to lean one way, I don't think he's going to be um, a viable fantasy piece. And I still would try to buy low on CEH or buy medium, I guess. Mm. Fair enough. Uh, mm. Well, after today's performance, uh, CEH did very well against a very good Bills defense. So yeah, I, I'm in. As long as he gets the touches, he's fine. Uh, let's move on. We've spent a lot of time on the news. Let's go to our uh, observations for the week. Uh, Richard, what did you uh, what did you see this week? Uh, the Browns tried to uh, tricking us into thinking that they're a good football team, and they are not a good football team. And uh, this was part of the news too: is that Odell Beckham Jr. surprise, surprise, was frustrated on the sidelines on multiple occasions, throwing his helmet and yelling at people, and yeah, doing the diva thing, which we kind of expect with OBJ these days. You know, he's the he is the uh, the diva of the league right now. Oh, there's another diva too uh, going on somewhere. Who's who's the other one, Kev? The other the other diva. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah there's Michael another Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas, the other diva. Yeah. So, but Odell Beckham is uh, showing why he's a diva, and the Browns are actually showing why they're crap. They, the Browns were just terrible. Um, uh, Baker Mayfield gets yanked at the, in the third quarter. They got Case Keenum in there. There was it was a total disaster. Uh, they got they got totally they got beaten up at, like just terrible. That that first interception like in the opening drive, you kind of thought, okay, ah, here they are. This is the Browns. This is the the real Browns. You know, and the the commentators were all saying like, oh, this is this is the big game. This is the turning point for the Browns because this is the first time the Browns and the Steelers have met with winning records at this point in the season. Yep, the Browns were the Browns, and uh, and 
there's they are not a good football team, and you can't and you can't trust them. Uh, I mean, practically all their players that you uh, normally would start were uh, they didn't give you any fantasy points whatsoever. Obviously, with only scoring putting seven points on the scoreboard naturally. So yeah, the Browns are uh, uh, they they can beat the weaker teams that are less than them, but uh, they're they're they can't beat. Uh, they can't beat um, other playoff contenders. In their defense, Cleveland is always garbage against Pittsburgh and Baltimore. And then, like everybody else, they're a completely normal team. So I'll give them another week until they're not facing the Steelers or the Ravens. Uh, that's Kevin, factual. Huh? That's, that's factual. I, I was that's assuming, true. yeah. They suck yeah. against the Ravens. They suck against the Steelers. They're not even good against the Bengals, honestly. And I get that it's like division games, but yeah, it, it's one of those things. But, th- but Baker game. hasn't been great all season, though, let's face it. He hasn't had to be, though. But Baker's, with... Baker's just not that guy, man. Yeah. Baker is just a dude. He's not He's not a number one overall pick type of guy. He's not a Joe Burrow. He's not a Kyler Murray. He is just a dude yeah. with an attitude, with a lot of commercials. Yeah, he does. Yeah, insurance commercials. <laughs> Kevin, what do you got for your observation this week? Uh, my observation this week is uh, that the Tennessee Titans offense is goddamn good. Like, really good. Like, elite level good. Like, we have to start looking at them, like, amongst the same tier as, like, the Chiefs, the Packers, the Ravens, whoever. Like, they, uh, ever since Tannehill took over, they've scored 30.42 points per game in the regular season. That's 14 points. Of, in, that's over 14 games. Like, Tannehill is just, I don't know, playing. He's a new person. Derrick Henry, we obviously know what he can do. And then, you know, A.J. Brown is, you know, he comes in right off of injury and posts almost 20 points in uh, in each of his last two games. John Smith was the tight end two through four games before leaving week six with an injury. And then when he left, some dude named Anthony Ferkser just put up 21 fantasy points. So I, I think this offense is like matchup proof and there's upside at every single position. And we have to kind of start like... Tennessee's not really been a good offense since for like the last couple of years, but I think we have to sign a cart, sign a cart, start to kind of treat them as if they're just one of the elites. Yeah, no, I I completely agree with that because um, we're seeing Tannehill as as a far better core. I mean, he's had to go through what Gase and Philbin, right? They're terrible, and now he's with Vrabel, and Vrabel knows how to uh, run an offense. So you know. Yeah, the real observation here is how bad is Marcus Mariota that he looked like god awful in the exact same offense. Tannehill comes in and looks elite. Just boy, it's, um, it's improper grooming. They uh, they started him in too quickly. They you know they Mariota was the kind of quarterback you had to work in, and that's the same. It's the same thing, and it was a bad class. He and Jameis Winston. Look at them both now, backups. Well, I mean, Jameis Winston is backing up Drew Brees. He is, I, I would put Jameis in over like Foles and Trubisky. Jameis gets a bad rap. I like Jameis. Yeah. Well, Winston so do he I. throws a lot, of, a lot of interceptions. Yeah, but he throws a lot of touchdowns. Throws a lot yep. of yeah, whereas on, the, whereas on the Eats other side, W's. Mariota is too cautious. He doesn't like throwing interceptions, and thus he poor numbers. Yeah, I once read like a Bill Barnwell tweet or something that was like, if Mariota and Jameis just took like the average of all their traits, they'd just be a perfect quarterback. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Um, all right, I'll go with my observation. It's kind of the same as Kevin's, but with like a less good offense. Um, Tampa Bay, the Bucks, they're good. Um, they made the, the defense in particular. They made Aaron Rodgers look like just horrible on Sunday afternoon. Just th- they made him look like like Mitch Trubisky. Like it was really bad. It was one of the worst days of Aaron Rodgers' career. Uh, in Scott Fish settings, he scored like negative 16 and a half points. Uh, and it all started with the defense. That's me. Uh, He's on my team and I started him. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't blame yourself for starting Aaron Rodgers. Oh, I should have started Kyle Allen. That's, but I don't mm, have a crystal. Never do that. Never do that. But, but I go need, down with the ship. I don't, have a, Kyle <laughs> Allen. I don't have a crystal ball, though. Go down with the ship. Never start Kyle Allen. Even if Rogers on by, don't start Kyle Allen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Didn't expect Bucks, to be their, this bad. Their their defense is horribly underrated, and it was underrated last year because Jameis kept putting them in terrible situations. Now with Brady being a little bit more careful than Jameis, uh, he's using his weapons. He's putting the defense in a good position, and that defense is very very good. Once Brady starts to pick up chemistry with uh, with Godwin, which it looked like he was picking up this game, uh, once Evans gets over his injury stuff, once you know uh, Fournette comes back to. I guess help Ronald Jones and spell him because Ronald Jones is very good again, uh, or again, or is apparently very good. Uh, that team is, yeah, they're they're gonna do very well uh, later in the season as things start to mesh. And yeah, that's that that that's it. They look good. Yeah, they are. 
Um, Brady's... Oh, and Gronk is getting his legs back. Yes, he, that, he, well, he actually looked like the that. Gronk of old this week. Yeah, the 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 old click is clicking. Let's see. Yeah, he just he just needed six weeks to uh, six weeks to get the get get his field legs back under him, and he's good to go. Hey, Gronk's a funny character. You've seen him picked up and dropped so many times on the waiver wire. I've seen him he's picked up and drop about every week. One week he's uh, picked up, next week he's dropped. He picked up the next week, drop, pick up, drop. He'll be picked up and kept this time. Uh, yeah, until next week when he uh, <laughs> he'll have two catches for eleven yards and he'll be dropped again. All right, uh, let's go moving on up. Uh, Richard, who 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 you got this week? Well, Kevin was talking about the Tennessee offense that is uh, on the rise, and uh, one of the reasons they're on the rise is this great utility receiver, Adam Humphreys. Uh, Adam Humphreys and John Smith sort of like. I think you're going to have weeks where one or the other is going to be the guy, but I think it's uh, this week it happened to be Adam Humphreys, and and uh, definitely got to be if he's unowned, you, you should uh, pick him up on waivers. I think uh, I've got uh, he's definitely uh, rising on up, but it's uh, but don't take away anything from uh, Johnny Smith. Johnny Smith's still uh, an elite tight end that you should own, so don't don't suddenly just because uh, I think he had uh, um, a, a minor ankle sprain or something like that. So don't drop, uh, don't drop Johnny Smith, but uh, definitely Adam Humphreys is part of the reason that the uh, the Titans looked so good, and and uh, with him returning from COVID, it certainly uh, really uh, helped the offense with him back in the lineup. And uh, Kevin, who who's moving for you? Um, this is a guy who was, who I saw left for dead after four weeks. Um, but I don't know if it's a coaching change or offensive game plan change or something. But Brandon Cooks is back and like in a big way. Uh, over the last two weeks, he's caught 17 of 21 targets for 120 or 229 yards and two touchdowns. Um, yeah, I don't think much more really needs to be said. Like the dude is is clearly a big part of the offense. Uh, Deshaun Watson is balling again, and I don't I don't know who their play caller is, but uh, clearly he's doing a better job than Bill O'Brien to at least get the ball in their playmakers' hands. Um, so yeah, Brandon Cooks is definitely moving on up. If you held on to him, or if you were able to pick him up, or trade for cheap for him then uh you've got yourself a nice little asset going forward yeah definitely whatever uh whatever cooks did to bill o'brien that's gone now and he's he's uh like you said he's back um similar thing for me uh left for dead after a few weeks but not to the same extent because he's a rookie uh deandre swift over the first uh three games he had sorry excuse me well this this week uh in a win he had 14 carries which was more than he had in the first four weeks combined. Uh, he had 12 carries through the first four weeks, and he had 14 for 116 yards and two touchdowns against the Jaguars. Um, the snap counts between him and Adrian Peterson were similar. Uh, Swift had more, but Swift was given uh, a lot of leeway at the goal line. He he got, he got three straight carries within the five to actually hit the end zone, uh, which he did. And he got a lot of the second half uh, touches. It looked like they were kind of phasing out uh, Peterson in the second half. Um, but Swift is definitely getting a bigger opportunity there. And yeah, if if there's still a window to get Swift at a cheaper price, now might be the time because he's got the Falcons next week. Definitely so because uh, Adrian Peterson might still look good and have some wheels left. But let's face it, he's... He's an old running back. I mean, he's nearly as old. He's two years, just just two years younger than uh, Frank Gore, right? So, I mean, they, he can't handle a full workload, but, but Swift has definitely got to be the guy. You're completely right on this. And carry on Johnson, ah, he's, he's, he is no more. I think he's finally, finally in the closet. He's he's can tuck him away and just forget about carry on Johnson now. And any other uh, running backs that, that sort of uh, come into the Detroit offense from time to time. But uh, yeah, I like DeAndre Swift. Good pick for uh, moving on up for me. Yeah, agree. All right. Well, I will come around the uh, the turn here. Uh, actually, no, we already talked about the guy I initially had, so we can switch it up. Uh, Kevin, why don't you go with your panic? Uh, yeah, my panic is Mike Evans. Um, obviously, you're not going to drop him or do anything crazy like that. Don't sell him for nothing. But uh, it is concerning that in the three games that Chris Godwin has played, he's only had 10 targets. Um, obviously, that is hashtag not good. Uh, I don't know. You know, it, this game was kind of weird since, you know, they had the defensive touchdowns and they were kind of shutting him out. Ronald um, so Jones. <laughs> Right, Ronald Jones had the majority of the workload. Like, going forward in more competitive games, I'm sure Evans will be more involved. But, um, yeah, Evans is a guy who, to me, is a sell-high candidate. Hopefully, your league mates don't take too much from this game. I mean, he had uh, he wasn't really playing very well outside of two games, which, again, no Godwin. 
and he's he just seems like he's constantly hobbled. So I kind of I worry about Evans mostly it, with just Godwin coming back and Gronk actually coming back too also matters. It just makes like everybody's value kind of decrease a little bit since I don't think Brady is the type of dude who's going to throw it 45 times a game anymore. Fair enough. But Devil's Advocate, like you said, um, I'd like to see Evans play when he's not hobbled at some point. Right. Um, well, I mean, I think he's still good. I just think yeah. like, if I'm like, I would trade Evans for like, I don't know, Justin Jefferson and a guy like in an instant. Yeah. I mean, well, Justin Jefferson is. Okay. Maybe that's is, not fair. Is he Justin too- Jefferson, the wide receiver one now, like he's uh, like, well, well on, on the Vikings, not the like on the Vikings. Oh, okay. Uh, Has he passed the that's, win? Uh, that's a whole different conversation. I think I, it's hard because like this game, like they were down like 40 to nothing. Like it's obviously someone is just going to do something <laughs> like, yeah, he was getting open, but because they're not like playing like playing basically i wouldn't say prevent defense but again they're up 40 15 or 40 to 7 or whatever the hell it was and it's against the falcons who already sucked 23 to 7 when he when they uh, he scored the the vikings finally scored after uh well jefferson's um, second touchdown was when the falcons were already up by 20 something late yeah it was right, a, i'm saying his like second touchdown was was like, closer yeah. to garbage time yeah I'm not trying to discredit him or anything like that, but it's not going to be very often that Kirk Cousins just goes nuts and gets the pass fucking 50 times or whatever he did. No. Well, anyways, that's it. Like you said, that's a different conversation. Um, I'll go with mine. I switched it up. I initially said Cam Akers, but because we talked about Akers and the Rams backfield already, I'm going to switch to Julian Edelman. Um, oh, good pick. Uh, Cam Newton or not, outside of Edelman's career setting game against the Seahawks, he has been utterly useless this year. Uh, over the last three weeks, he has uh, six targets each, but only uh, so 18 targets over the last three games, but seven receptions. Uh, he hasn't gone over 35 yards in any of those games. And he just he like like Kevin said about Mike Evans, he's constantly hobbled. He doesn't look healthy. He looks slow. And he's just not on the same page as Cam. Uh, the Patriots are now a run first offense because there's nobody to throw to. <laughs> And yeah, I don't really see things changing other than the odd blow up game. Uh, so if you have somebody that's willing to buy Edelman, I would definitely uh, make that sell. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know point. what you can sell him for. I, I really don't know. What, I don't know what the pitch is. I'm sure some him. Patriots fan will take him. Not me, but somebody will. <laughs> Patriots it, it, fan won't take oh, him because Patriots sure. fan are on, Patriots fans are on the inside. They know all about him. <laughs> as as the Edelman owner, I will tell you what the pitch is. The pitch is, hey, look, the Patriots are coming off a weird week with COVID. They couldn't really practice. They they're playing a rough Denver defense. It was just an overall bad game. They're gonna bounce back. Like, come on, it's the Patriots. Then just hope they don't look at Edelman's game log. <laughs> Pretty weak. If they look weak. at Edelman's game log, just be like, come on, it's come on, it's Edelman. You know. You're getting from Edelman. Yeah, you get it from Edelman. Exactly, that's your pitch. Yeah, but yeah, uh, Edelman is a huge panic. He doesn't look good. Cam, no Cam. You put Stidham in there. Even it's bad. Wait, he's getting passing yards though. Passing Ooh. yards, yes. <laughs> but that 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 pass to Cam was awesome. But you know, nice eleven yarder. Uh, well, everybody's favorite segment's coming up now. Richard, oh, if you, I got my there. I got my own panic. Oh do. right, sorry, Richard. Go ahead. I want. I it's definitely like last week on the show. I was hesitant. I I did not push the panic button on this guy. Last week, I thought, ah, give him another week. And I gave him another week. And Juju Smith-Schuster, I don't know how, in a 38-7 to blowout, Juju Smith-Schuster ends up with, (laughs) I mean, uh, four targets, two catches, and six yards. In a 38-7 to blowout. Where is Juju? I said it's last week. I said it last week when, when Claypool was going off. Uh, where is Juju in all this? Because Juju got nothing. And uh, and Kevin, I think you brought up the point. Is like, is and was Antonio Brown right? And you said yes. And well, I think it could be true. I, I'm, I'm kind of worried about... Uh, if you own Juju Smith-Schuster... It's it's not looking good, especially with Deontay Johnson coming back. What what happens then? Because Johnson's another guy on the rise. So you got Claypool and Johnson, like, and you got Juju not doing anything. I'm really kind of worried about what where Juju's fitting in now with this offense. I mean, even James Washington did did more stuff. I know. I know where I know where uh, the the formations that uh, Juju is catching from aren't exactly uh, where Ben Roethlisberger likes to throw, but I mean that's where he's working from. But 
I'm kind of worried about Juju Smith-Schuster. He's turning into a quote-unquote guy. Well, let me put it out there that James Washington has not passed Juju Smith-Schuster on the on the Pittsburgh depth chart. Let let let's let's set that straight. Oh, that's not going to happen. No, I know that. But James Washington is like the just a guy to end all just a guys. Like he's yeah. he's there and the beneficiary of a really good offense. But John, um, where is Juju? Maybe he's just a slot guy. Who knows? Maybe maybe he's hurt. Maybe maybe he's still hurt. Who knows? I don't know. Because the first game, like week one, he was fine. He was getting targets. Maybe he got hurt. Still pretty pathetic numbers, though. For a 38-7 to blowout against the Browns. Maybe that's why. He did, they didn't really need him. Well, then they don't really need him for every other game done, do they? The answer to everything is, where is the where is the Falcons on the schedule? And then they can figure it out there. <laughs> Falcons and Cowboys, look for them on the schedule. Okay. Right. Well, oh, uh, cue the sound effect. Go. Cue the sound effect. It's I think. unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. And it is time for our weekly Mr. Unlimited, uh, where we each pick, or this week it'll be uh, me and Richard picking Mr. Unlimited, and Kevin will choose uh, who it is. Uh, I'll go first. Or Richard, you can go first. All right. My nominee for Mr. Unlimited this week is Derek Henry. Now, um, on Tuesday night, he played a game, and uh, now he was in, uh, ineligible to be Mr. Unlimited. And he would have been Mr. Unlimited simply because of a, of a non-play that was actually called back by a penalty, in which he stiff-armed Josh Norman that Twitter went viral to the max on this uh, stiff arm on Josh Norman that said, Josh Norman flying, beautiful play. And then what does he do? He follows it up this week with his, I don't know why, I don't know how Henry does this. He, every season, he's got to have one or two or three games where he breaks these huge, massive runs from, from deep, uh, like inside his own 20. And he outruns cornerbacks. And you'd think that, you know, a guy his size could not outrun speedy. You know, cornerbacks are fast, right? I mean, and he's outrunning these guys to the end zone. I mean, and he's carrying a ball. <laughs> I mean, Derrick Henry is a beast. Derrick Henry uh, is really, he continues to surprise me. And, and still, still to this day, can break these massive runs from deep in his own end. He's been doing this like one or two times every season. He gets one of these. And I, I just, he's just totally amazing. He was, he's definitely Mr. Unlimited. And that's my pitch for Derrick Henry nominee for Mr. Unlimited of week six. Well, Derrick Henry's done this three times in the last two years, and two of them have been against the, been against the Texans. Maybe he just really doesn't like Houston. It's only the <laughs> AFC South teams that he just bullied. It was the Jags, the other one, right? Yeah, I can't yeah. never forget that one. <laughs> okay, top that, when, when Jono. <laughs> run, like, when he does these long runs, it just looks like he's jogging, and it doesn't look like <laughs> he should be pulling away from these dudes, but he just is. It just doesn't... It looks unreal watching it. There's always a screenshot of his face as he's making these runs, and I can't wait for the for this one to get released. No, the bug eyes, yeah, he, the yeah, bug eyes, the bug eyes, and he's always looking back. It's it's just ridiculous, man. <laughs> Anyways, my Mister Unlimited is uh, Julio Jones. The rumors of Julio Jones's demise were greatly exaggerated. Um, he has played two healthy games this year, and in those games, he has 296 yards on 17 catches and two touchdowns. Um, Julio Jones is still a top two receiver in the league, regardless of, you know, whatever, Matt Ryan, the Falcons being garbage, whatever. Julio Jones makes this offense go, and he's the only reason Matt Ryan looks good, really, apparently. Um, yeah, no, coming back off an injury and just... All of this Julio is washed talk and Julio is no good anymore and all this stuff. Nah, get out of here. Julio Jones is still top two receiver in the league and will continue to, to continue to prove so. Okay, Kev. <coughs> uh, I really wish I could pick Julio, but got to give it to King Henry here. Um, just a monstrous performance. Um, 200 plus yards. I saw a statistic said he in since he joined is entered the league. He's had three 200 plus yard rushing games the rest of the league has had three so um that in itself is impressive but i mean just basically taking over the game in overtime and just willing the team to a win is did you guys see the gif where like uh he's out there for the coin toss the uh, the titans win it and then deshaun watson kind of just like yes rolls his eyes he's and, like, like oh he was pissed off he's like he oh, lost God the toss. he's like all right we, <laughs> we lost um <laughs> that's just funny i mean yeah uh julio man i cannot how could you all doubt Julio, man? This is Julio Jones. Um, that being said, he is not Mr. Unlimited for the week. It's Derrick Henry. It's hard to argue that. I can't imagine that he won't put up another one sometime this year. 
But uh, put it in stone. Uh, Derrick Henry is week six, Mr. Unlimited. Mr. Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. And there he is. Derrick Henry's in the books. I will put him in the books here. And there's no arguing that pick, realistically. But I had to stick up for Julio. Man was getting way too much disrespect everywhere. People calling him washed. Get out of here. Well, he was. Uh, I, I did uh, a, f- a fantasy pros uh, blurb, and he was a buy low candidate for. Uh, uh, I put him as a buy low candidate. Yeah, because I knew that's the last gonna... week. Buy low on Julio. There's no reason. Like, yeah. if anyone is doubting Julio, like, come on, man. This is not. Come on. No, he's got a couple don't... game, a couple games of bad production. It's not like he's AJ Green where he's been bad for two years. Like he still got it. I mean, he wasn't healthy either of those games. He missed what three quarters of one, and then missed half of the other one with injury. Come on now, like let's let's be real. But anyways, let's go to the wire. Um, very very thin wire week. It was very difficult for me to write this week's waiver piece. Um, trying to highlight Boston Scott as an as a as a real option here. But let's try to go with some of the guys we haven't talked about. Um, Kevin, since you spent the last segment listening to us, uh, why don't you go with a waiver wire? Uh, ooh, try one of the receivers we haven't talked about yet. Um, sure. So someone who's not um on this list, I don't really know what his uh what his like ownership is, but Keelan Cole, like I don't think he's highly owned. No, he's a uh, thirty-one. Got to be. Yeah, he's not that highly owned. Yeah. I mean, but Keelan Cole this week, six catches for nine or six catches on nine targets for one hundred forty-three yards. Um. Yeah, he's just he's just kind of balling. Um, I, I get that there's a lot like DJ Chark is still there. Uh, LaVisca Chenault is going to get some targets. But Keelan Cole is a guy who every game this year has scored above eight fantasy points and a half PPR. He's had two games. Uh, he's had three games above 15. So he has a little bit of upside and he clearly has like a solid floor. Uh, every game this year, he's gotten more than five targets. So um, he's a guy who I think you can, you know, during these bye weeks, during these COVID situations, you can plug him in there and he'll be a decent start. Yeah, he's a good. Yep. Uh, he's getting the targets. It kind of surprises me actually because in previous years uh, he wasn't he wasn't getting a good pick. He was getting between five and seven for the first five weeks, and then Minshew threw like forty something passes this week because they're getting blown up by the Lions. Chark had fourteen targets, um, just and had like forty yards out of it. So Cole was much more efficient. I like it as well. Uh, Richard, who do you got for a uh, I guess a running back? Since we uh, talked about a few of them already. Uh, well, yeah, we already talked about uh, we already talked about Hasty, but I would say that um, a good guy to pick up is uh, J D McKissick. Actually, um, uh, you're not starting him uh, as a as any kind of RB one, but uh, with these bye weeks coming up, he, he was my RB two this week in F six P. Was he? Was he your RB two? Uh, uh, yeah, Cook Cook got hurt, Bell got cut, and uh, I started James Conner and J D McKissick. Yeah, uh, what did he get you points wise for 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 his efforts? Cause, he did cause well. Um, shoot, he put up uh, the points. Eleven point four. Yeah, he did well. Yeah, I because I you know I'm just looking at the statistics right, and uh, it's it, statistics in the in the fantasy points aren't aren't uh, exactly just getting up this. Yeah, he had, had eleven uh, eleven point four fantasy. Hey, he did good for you. Yeah, but uh, eight rushing attempts. Um, uh, you can't you can't argue six targets. Um, because it's uh, He's always been kind of a good player, and uh, granted, this is Antonio uh, uh, Gibson's backfield, but it's kind of looking a little bit like they're working McKissick in a little bit more and more and more and more. So I think McKissick's a good pickup, and uh, you're lucky to have him, uh, John, on your team. And and, and uh, kudos for you starting him. Uh, did he help you win? Let me take a look. I'm currently winning, I think. You are unless, winning. Un- unless Drake went off. Um, Come but- on, you know damn well Drake didn't go off. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't uh, had the game up. You're up. Uh, ten. You're up ten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Well okay, done. Well, Drake and Cooper. Okay, whatever. But he's still. Wait, he's ho- still. Uh, uh, people aren't picking him up in in twelve teams. In most twelve team leagues. I mean, we're kind of sharp at the F6P league because everybody's every every owner at F6P is excellent. <laughs> It's the toughest league. It's the toughest league in fantasy, I would say. The fantasy six pack league, because we we're all we're all damn good. And uh, so you, uh, for you to have him on your team and starting him, bravo, man! I started him out of necessity, not because I'm smart. That was a desperation move. But I will say, uh, he outsnapped Gibson this uh, this week, forty nine to forty five. So who knows whose backfield it is right now? But that's my pick. Good. Yep. Uh, I guess I'll go for tight ends. Um, Trey Burden for the second week in a row uh, did very well. He's without with Mo Ali Cox hurt and Jack Doyle doing more 
blocking than route running. Uh, Burton is the guy. They're trying. They're really, really trying to get him the ball. They gave him a direct snap at the goal line. He ran one in and then gave him another passing touchdown. So he's taking full advantage of being the route running tight end for the Colts. Uh, he's had at least five targets in all the games he's played this season. And with the Colts pass catchers struggling, uh, like Hilton is looking like a shell of a shell of a shell of himself. Uh, and Paris Campbell's hurt. Michael Pittman's hurt. Burden <sighs> could be the guy. Um, he looks like he's the red zone guy for sure. Uh, so, hey, if you need a tight end, uh, go Burton. Yeah, better than Mowally. Well, he's hurt. Yeah, I know, but it was he is better than Mowally. Yeah. Uh Kevin, you got any QBs? QBs are really thin this week. Um really, really thin this week. But anybody you can think of off the top of your head that you want to do it for, for QB? Yeah, I mean QBs it's to me it's always a matchup thing. So if you're looking at the week seven matchups, the first thing I would do is look at who's playing the Jets and then go from there. But um Oh, it's who's who's probably on the waiver. I mean if if Herbert isn't picked up by now, you definitely gotta grab him. Um I guess Teddy, Jared Goff is not good. Baker Mayfield's not good. Andy Dalton is showing us this week that he's not good. He's not good. He is. Boy, oh boy, he's not good. Uh, Baker. Kyle Allen. No, Kyle Allen is definitely not not good. I think actually someone who's been overlooked a lot is Derek Carr. I think Derek Carr, uh, he's currently the quarterback 19, but I think he didn't play week six. So I don't know if that includes that. But 24 points against KC, 20 against Buffalo. Uh, He's averaging about... 290 yards a game i know i know he gets tampa in week seven but i mean you could do worse than Derek carr i think that offense is pretty good yeah i have him in my waiver post as the only qb to pick up just because i'm limited to 35 percent roster and under mm-hmm. and i'm not telling people to pick up andy dalton after this game so Derek carr uh coming off a bye he's had the extra week to kind of look at the tampa defense and see what they can do uh as you mentioned earlier in the show henry ruggs is a beast going deep and to compliment Josh Jacobs, Darren Waller, they got they got a good offense that went punch for punch with the Chiefs. So, God, dude, I didn't realize Daniel Jones has been so bad. Yeah, dude, Daniel John Jones is not good. But I didn't think he'd be this bad. No, he he's not good. <laughs> he has he has three touchdowns and six interceptions on the season. Yeah. Ah, uh, boy. Worse than Eli, sort of. Actually, defenses have figured him out. They got him. They got him in the box. Also because the Giants' offensive line and running game now is just awful, so they can just mm, run at help. Jones and nothing you can do about it. Anyways, let's move on to. Oh, can our I drops. can I mention one more uh, one more? Because I know a lot of people have probably dropped AJ Green. Pick AJ Green back up. He uh, bounced back. He had one target against Baltimore last week, and he got nothing. He had absolutely zip. A lot of people were dropping him. Pick him back up. He got. Uh, 11 targets. He went from one target to 11 this week. 96 yards and 79% snap percentage. So um, uh, a lot of people dropped him. Make him a priority because people might have rage dropped uh, AJ Green last week. So put him, uh, if he's unowned, grab him. Fair enough. He's owned in 50, he's rostered in 54% of leagues right now. So maybe not super deep leagues he's available. But yeah, like you said, if he was rage dropped, Cincinnati is going to have to throw a ton. So. Yeah, for sure. Good option there. Uh, all right, let's go on to drops. Yeah, Kevin, who you got? This one hurts me. Uh, this one, I feel like this guy has been a mainstay since I started playing fantasy football. But T.Y. Hilton, you got to go, man. It's time. The dude is just not getting it done. He's playing a high percentage of the snaps. He's getting a decent amount of targets, but he is just not putting it. He doesn't have a single game over 70 yards this season. He doesn't have a touchdown on the season. Um, Like we've said before, there's just a ton of targets on the Colts offense to go around, and it seems like T.Y. Hilton is just a guy. Um, He's no longer the focal point of that passing attack. So I think with the Week 7 bye the Colts are having, I think it's a good time for you to drop him and just move on. Yeah, Yeah. it's a shame. I shame that because at one time he was just, uh, you know, a a trusty wide receiver. He's no longer your absolutely right cap. Shame. Tough. Sure. Uh, I'll go next. Um, Marvin Jones. Uh, He's always been a guy, or the past few years anyways, that is, you know, consistent-ish in that he'll get you, you know, 50 yards, a few catches, and then he'll go off for 100 yards and three touchdowns any given game. But he has been not good all year long. Uh, The last three games, he has a combined six targets. Uh, He has 68 yards over those three games. Uh, Sorry, not six catches over the last three games, excuse me. Uh, 68 yards. He had finished last week with five targets, two catches, eight yards against the Jags. Um, Just, he's been really bad. The Lions offense, 
theoretically should be able to support two wide receivers, but it doesn't for whatever reason. And Jones is too inconsistent in his good days uh, to trust when he's doing poorly. So I think at this point, uh, unless you're desperate and you really need a, a receiver like due to injury or buys, you can drop him. But again, if you're desperate, he does get the Falcons next week. So that's probably going to be his blow up game. And then you can drop him afterwards when he gets the Colts. Mm. So, yep. Uh, not a problem there. Yeah, Marvin uh, Jones. Another guy like, you know. No, I mean, Jones was never on Hilton's level, but mm. oh well. Uh, Richard, you got the drop. Well, I hate to say this, but uh, Mike Gesicki, uh, I know I know he has high ownership, and I know he has the most yardage of all the, the tight ends on, by far, actually, of all the uh, Dolphins, but... It just doesn't seem like he's like the focal uh, tight end, and uh, Adam Shaheen actually got the uh, got the money touchdown like uh, with 51 yards and a touchdown. It seems like uh, that uh, Fitzpatrick is is moving it around, and it doesn't really uh, matter if uh, you know Gesicki. Uh, this is his targets for for the last. Um, for the last four games, three, three, six, where he had 91 yards and no score, but he, you know, still scored it, but he had just two targets and no receptions at all. Um, you can, if you need room on your roster and you're wondering if it's, if there's somebody you can drop, don't wor- worry too much about dropping Mike Kaseki. If you have to drop somebody for, uh, for the, for the bye week and need to pick up somebody, um, uh, Mike Kaseki. You might not like to drop him, and if you can, if you can hold him, you can. But he's also droppable if you if you need room on your roster for for new people coming in off the waivers this week. Yeah, for, I yeah, he's been struggling. I will say, um, as far as tight ends go, you're not really gonna find Gesicki's upside. What he can produce, because uh, tight end sucks. But yeah, he he had, he's been super inconsistent. Uh, all right, let's. Move on to the final segment here, our spec ads. Uh, Kevin, you have one this week since uh, last uh, week was a bit of a struggle for you. I, I'm going to call you out on that. <laughs> this week this week I've got one. Uh, Giovanni Bernard, a man we are all familiar with. No one likes to pick him up, but with Joe Mixon exiting the game with a foot injury. Um, I don't know, man. I, I think Bernard is a guy who could, he's just going to be a viable fill-in for Mixon whenever he's out. And with them passing the ball so much, he's gonna he'll have extended value if Mixon misses time. And I'm not saying that Mixon is miss, gonna miss time. I'm not a doctor, but Mixon to me seems like he's always banged up and he's always kind of a threat to miss time. And so I think with this pick pick up here, you can kind of get ahead of the pack and maybe you know predict an injury. Yeah, that's a good pick. And Gio hasn't been bad. He's still involved in the passing game. So if he plays, he's, he's just Gio. I feel like Gio Bernard yeah, is like he's just Gio most, Bernard. He's just the most average back of the last like eight years. Yeah. And he's always got that nice PPR floor, too, if you're using him. I cannot uh, believe they paid him as much money as they did. No, well, what are you going to do? He's a good pickup and not a bad cuff as well. The Bengals. Yeah. Um, Richard, are you ready with a spec ad, or you want me to go? Yeah, can you go? Because I uh, I had to decide on another one because I already talked about uh, J.D. McKissick. Cool. Uh, my spec ad sticking with the theme of the Colts uh, that we've been that we've been talking about is Marcus Johnson. Um, Marcus Johnson actually led the Colts in... Uh, yards this week um and his eight targets also led all the colts he's a fourth year receiver kind of a journeyman um but he caught two long passes he got 55 yarder and then a 20 yarder and he looks to be their most explosive weapon like zach pascal is not really a deep guy ty hilton's looking uh you know looking off he only had one catch for 11 yards on sunday so if you know they need a a deep threat um yeah, I mean, if you're in a super deep league or, you know, bye weeks are coming up, there I are worse that... options than Marcus Johnson out there. I guess somebody that, you know, caught 108 yards on five passes uh, against th- the Bengals, but it's always there, – there are worse options than taking a than taking a flyer on somebody that, that can do that. I think that's an excellent stash. That is one of your best stashes, actually. He's a, he's a, Thank he's you. A, he's a good – yeah, I would say that it's – uh, 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 darn it! I wish I thought of him because uh, I he he was noticeable to me uh, on on the on the Colts, and uh, that isn't really really. I have to yeah. hats off to him. Hats off to them. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, 
I'm going to go with a guy that he scored a touchdown this week, and I, he's probably going to get picked up anyway. But I'm going to. But I already talked about J.D. McKissick, so this is kind of like just got, just a guy that is sort of like grabbing out of the air, really. And he uh, lost to the Titans, but he's a steady Eddie in fo- fantasy football, and uh, we kind of forget that that Randall Cobb is really a guy that you know you should you should have him stashed on your roster he's a guy he's a guy that could really come in handy now that we're in the bye weeks so uh he's my he's my spec at um scored a touchdown this week 61 percent of the snaps which is which is kind of his average this uh, average this year but uh he's gotten four targets a uh, four targets a game he only got 17 yards but in a touchdown but i don't know if you're i mean he's playing green bay next week um probably you know start you, expectations are low for rental Cobb. i'm sorry i don't have a better spec ad than a than a veteran i know i should be picking somebody a little bit with less uh name recognition than randall cobb for spec ad but um i already talked about J, jd mckissick who actually kind of has a bit of more name recognition but um, i'm kind of short like kevin last week i'm a bit short on uh on on a spec ad candidate but uh, i'll take randall cobb this week well, Randall Cobb's been, uh, we've talked about Cobb a lot uh, on the show this year. So, yeah, can't argue against Randall Cobb there. Um, that's it for our segments uh, this week. Uh, anybody have any final thoughts before we sign off? Uh, yeah, um, it's going to be great to have Russell Wilson back again. I kind of miss the excitement of uh, of the of his of his games uh i kind of look forward to watching him play again and uh and his gang lockett and metcalf and carson i kind of miss uh it'd be great to have uh the bye weeks back with them um so oh and i also want to one final thought too is that we didn't touch we didn't talk very much at all today about justin jefferson i know there was a lot of garbage time but uh He's for real. Jefferson Jefferson's for real. Um, this guy, um, you can tell, actually, you can tell in Justin Jefferson how excellent the LSU football program is for training up wide receivers. He is just, he's playing like an NFL receiver in his first year. He's like, he knows what's going on. This guy is, this guy is not, uh, this guy's not your normal out of college, uh, player this guy's this guy was groomed for the nfl and uh i have to i actually didn't really put too much uh weight on how good the lsu uh program is but the when you look at guys like clyde edwards hilaire uh, i mean the lsu football program man they are that's a pretty good football program they got going on there they are training players for the nfl there yeah they're the new alabama yeah all right there it is well uh Kev, you have any final thoughts? Otherwise, I'm going to sign off. Uh, oh, um, Andy Dalton is, is not as good as Dak Prescott. Ooh, that's... Mm. How did you figure that one out? <laughs> so, the Cowboys currently have three points against this Cardinals defense that is uh, hashtag not good. And... Um, are, there levels not, to, are there levels uh, to the hashtag not good? Oh, like, come on. Peterson is excellent. He's always good. Peterson. Patrick Peterson. He is the greatest. He is I mean, the greatest. You Don't you dare dis... Peterson and and that defense. Dude, Kev. dude this just got. Dude, Patrick Peterson dude is right the best in the, in the world. He is the best cornerback that ever was. The I, goat. Are, are you being sarcastic? No. What, what's with the Patrick Peterson love? I like. Him. Yeah, I, I swear you've never mentioned Patrick Peterson. <laughs> this is like the ever. first I've heard you ever mention <laughs> Patrick Peterson being good. He is good. You, love Patrick Peterson? you like Patrick is, Peterson? Even you. Yeah. Patrick Peterson's great. I would never gush about him like this. Yeah, we've never heard you gush about anybody like this. I'm doing it just to be Patrick Peterson. I'm doing it to be obstinate, Kevin, (laughs) because he's always he's always mean when 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 a team has a down game. Yeah, but it's not one receiver having a down game because Patrick Peterson shutting him down. It's an entire team having a bad game because Andy Dalton is not good. (laughs) Does anyone think the Cardinals' defense is good? I didn't realize (laughs) that was a thing. Cardinals' defense. It's not good, right? I mean, they lost Chandler Jones. They drafted a dude in the first round. He can't get on the field. Patrick Peterson is great. But no, I, 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 good, I just so. felt like being contrarian, Kev. That's all. <laughs> all right. Well, they but, did hold the Jets to 10 points last week, so I guess I should give them some credit. And they had they did force Zeke to fumble twice. So That's Anyways. true. That's true, Kev. Hey, hey, hey. That's not Peterson, though. That's not Peterson. I know. That's it's, the guys Peterson. Out, it's the guys up front that are doing it. But just the same. Kevin's dissing their defensive. You know, forced two fumbles out of Ezekiel. 
in one game. Huh? Well, my final thought is, if you're Could Dak been... Prescott, are you hoping, are you sitting there hoping for your, for your team to win? Or are you sitting there hoping that Andy Dalton continues looking like trash so you can demand more money on your next contract? <laughs> There's got to be the more. Dude, Dak Prescott is going to go <laughs> walk into Jerry Jones' office tomorrow and just be like, dude, give me $400 million right now. Fact, you don't even know what my leg looks like. Just give it to me. Well, like, it came, are you kidding me? It, it came <laughs> up. Like, just, show the, just show him the tape of this game. And just yeah. pay me. It, it came give up on more... Twitter. It came up on Twitter. What would it take for Andy Dalton to take over from Dak Prescott? And I answered, and I says, "Well, he'd practically have to win the Super Bowl at least get there." And even he'd have to win the Super Bowl six times in a row. <laughs> like he would never take the starting job. <laughs> he would need to throw for seven hundred yards a game and then win the Super Bowl three times in a row. Like oh, that's. Oh my God! He just missed Gallup. Well, Gallup has already dropped a touchdown. I will oh, say. I, have, I do have one more thought. Yes. Oh yeah, the Gallup drop was horrible. Uh, you'll all see it um, by the time you've seen. By the time you listen to this, you'll have seen the Gallup drop. Bad drop. Honestly, a game-changing drop. They were down like what 21-0 and they had to kick a field goal because that dropped. Yep. But um, I would just like to say that uh, if you guys, you know, you know, sometimes you lose in fantasy and you want to blame your players, but don't point fingers, point thumbs. <laughs> Cam Newton. Cam Newton is the is the man for that. Cam Newton is honestly <laughs> just the greatest. Cam. So point good. thumbs. <laughs> <sighs> I like it. Cam is a treasure. There Hashtag you know. get Cam get Cam some help, please. <laughs> Anyways. Wait, thumbs that I was like the it. show, guys. This was a long one. Uh, Appreciate everybody sticking around. Um yeah, we'll be we'll be back next week and hopefully the waiver wire will be a little bit more helpful for everybody. But again, thanks for listening uh, for listening. Uh for Richard, Kevin, myself, Jonathan. See you next week. <laughs>